Thank you, Dr. Lifton, for that very kind introduction and for your gracious invitation to come here to Rockefeller University. I'm so honored to join you today, and I want to thank the members of the Pearl Meister Green Guard Prize Selection Committee for inviting me to participate in this very special presentation. I'd like to commend Ursula von Reidensgard and Paul Greengard for establishing this important prize recognizing leading women scientists who are doing cutting edge research. Most importantly, my deepest congratulations go to Dr. Joanne Corey on the recognition of her pathbreaking work in the important field of carbon sequestration and plant genetics. Dr. Corey, your work is an inspiration, demonstrating that scientific and technological solutions are emerging that will make a real contribu contribution to tackling the ever more urgent problem of our changing climate. It's a pleasure and an honor to be with this audience at this university, which has been a beacon of biomedical research for over 100 years. I was recently reading John Barry's The Great Influenza about the 19 pandem 1918 pandemic, which I'm sure many others have read recently, in which the Rockefeller Institute's early role of setting the bar of research institutions is so powerfully described. Those were the earliest days of Rockefeller, but since then it has proven again and again to be on the forefront of scientific research, developing the knowledge needed for critical advances in science and medicine. 2020 has thrown the human challenges of living on this fra fragile planet into stark relief. The pandemic has killed over 200,000 Americans, a million people worldwide, and infected more than 35 million people so far. As the scientific and medical communities here and in other places race to develop vaccines, the role of advancing medical science for the well being of humanity has never felt more important. I'm humbled to be speaking to you today, and I applaud the amazing women and men at Rockefeller who make up this community. I've spent my career working as an environmental advocate at the Natural Resources Defense Council, working to advance solutions to the growing list of environmental challenges, and most specifically the challenge of the climate crisis. Climate change imperils human well being across the globe, especially for the most vulnerable among us. It is also the one that Dr. Corey has chosen to focus her research on at this critical moment. The scientific evidence is conclusive that the planet is warming at an unprecedented rate. The world's five warmest years have all occurred since 2015, with nine of the 10 warmest occurring since 2005. The UN IPCC reports conclude that warming is a result of our voracious appetite to burn fossil fuels. The projected human consequences of this rapid warming are devastating. From extreme heat to unprecedented weather events to sea level rise and the spread of infectious disease. And the ecological effects are equally devastating as entire ecosystems from the Arctic to the tropics are being altered. This year in the United States, the catastrophic impact of warming has never been clearer. Extreme heat has blanketed the West, topping 120 degrees in Los Angeles. Unprecedented fires have ravaged and displaced communities all across the West, with fires still raging. Communities across the Gulf Coast have been inundated and battered by Hurricanes Laura and Sally, with more on the way. The ferocity of these events show what lies in store as our climate changes, as frequency and intensity of extreme events is projected to increase. How many more extreme events will be necessary before we get serious about climate policy here in the United States? We are very proficient at declaring disasters, but not at avoiding them or at minimizing their effects through adaptation and developing plans to make our communities resilient. Today, though, I don't want to talk about the bleak future if we do not act in time, but talk about what can be done and why Dr. Corey's work is so critical to our collective future. For those of us who have spent decades urging action on climate policy, our emotions fluctuate between hope and despair. I remain hopeful because there is a clear path forward to address the climate crisis both here in the United States and globally, 
And for the most part, we do know what it is. In 2020, the science is understood. We know the causes of climate change. We know what the rate of change is, and we do know what to do about it. We know we need to dramatically reduce emissions to net zero and move to a clean energy future. The question is, will we? Rather than despair, we all need to be motivated. And like, like Dr. Corey, engage in the climate challenge and participate in our professional lives and as citizens in the steps and actions that will move us towards a more sustainable and more resilient future. We know it's imperative to keep warming below two degrees centigrade and hopefully within 1.5 degrees if we are to avoid the worst impacts. We know that technological and economic changes across our agricultural, energy, transportation, industrial and urban systems that are necessary for the transformational change required. We know we need an all of the above strategy of mitigation through emission reductions, supercharging our efficiency mandates, unleashing renewables, electrifying the transportation sector, capturing carbon through our forests and soils and technological carbon removal. And we know we need to change our own behavior by eating less meat, flying less, using public transit, choosing renewables for our energy choices, and opting for electric vehicles. We will not avoid the worst impacts without a doubling down of ambition in accelerating investment in solutions and national policies across the world to drive this transition forward. We know these actions will head us towards the 2050 net zero goal, but we also know we need to invest more in science and technology to identify new solutions such as Dr. Corey is doing right now. Most of my career has focused on the policy elements needed for this transition, and we have not yet succeeded, far from it. And we won't succeed without broader public support and political muscle. That voice of concerned citizens is beginning to be raised. Young people across the globe are joining with the young activist Greta Thunberg, striking every Friday for their future. Others are marching in our communities, demanding justice, racial justice, economic justice, climate justice. Many are joining virtual communities to demand climate action. These young people are demanding of us, imploring that we act on climate because their future depends on it. In 2018, the UN's IPCC report on climate and assessing what it would take to achieve the 1.5 degree centigrade goal show that a major acceleration of actions will be necessary, and a significant piece of that would be through sequestration of carbon through our natural systems, our soils and forests. Dr. Corey's work is specifically designed to address that goal, ramping up carbon sequestration in our plants and soils. Her work on plant genetics and carbon sequestration is straightforward in theory. We know plants suck carbon out of the atmosphere, how do we supercharge them to do more? The ideal plant project is designed to do just that, to modify plants to establish deeper waxy roots that sequester more carbon and replenish our depleted soils, then to transfer those properties to our food crops so that we can feed the world. The project is nothing short of audacious, addressing two global crises, our climate crises and food crises which of course is why she did win the Ted Audacious Prize in 2019. And you will see just how audacious she is in her TED Talk that follows. She will do the science, but she will need help from a broader community of policymakers, agribusiness, farmers, and philanthropists to take it to scale. Dr. Corey is a brilliant scientist, a humanitarian, and a woman. She is concerned about her children's future, our children's fu future, and she decided to do something about it. She feels the pressure of time, her own time, as she has lived with Parkinson's for 15 years. And she feels the pressure of all of our time, knowing we are running out of time to get this right. She is determined, she is inspiring, and she is tough, as women scientists have to be. She attributes that toughness to growing up with four brothers. She learned early on how to compete with men. Her career advanced in a scientific era when men predominated. Her early mentors were all men. That experience has forged her own, her approach in her own lab in which she makes mentorship primary. As she has said, for me, success is 
Was I a good mentor to those who cho chose to train with me? The answer is a resounding yes for the hundred women and men who have trained in her lab. Tonight's Perlmeister Green Guard Award recognizes Dr. Corey as the pathbreaking scientist she is in plant genetics and recognizes her for tackling with determination and optimism the greatest challenge we face as a human race, our fast changing climate. She believes her research can help save the planet, and it will. Thank you, Dr. Corey.